gonna keep it low now If you wanna go, let's go Let's wrap it up and hit the road Cause I, 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 I Wanna try Do the summer night And when we We Good morning, everyone. Spring has definitely arrived here at Camp David Adventures. I wouldn't say so much in the aspect of the weather quite yet. We're still having quite a few um, cool days around here. It's still getting down in the 30s and 40s. So uh, weather-wise, we aren't seeing spring as much. But as far as our animals and our homesteading projects, we're starting to see that it is definitely spring. As you just saw with our episode of our tribe of many when they just came and visited. Um, we got four new baby chicks. Before we got those new baby chicks, we had 11 chickens and in the fall we had four turkeys, but we did go ahead and process them and we ate them for Thanksgiving and Christmas and sold a couple to some of our friends. But we have now the new addition of the four new chicks to our flock and also today I am just getting ready to go pick up five baby turkeys that we ordered via the mail. So we're getting ready to head to the post office and pick up those chicks. Last year we got all of our chicks from a local store, um, Big R. However, this year for our turkeys, I wanted to go ahead and make sure and get a specific breed and that we were gonna get um, male and female a certain amount of each. So I went ahead and went online to Meyer. Um, hatchery and I'll put the link in the description down below and ordered five turkeys um, for us to go ahead and raise over the summer and once again we will have them processed in the fall. That is actually not the only thing that is going to be going on around here at Camp David. With us being in the house fairly new last summer we didn't do too many projects. We did build some garden boxes to try and start gardening. We of course got the chickens and we kind of stopped at that point. Over the winter, I have had lots of dreams and planning going on in my mind because we do live on two acres. I would like to homestead some of that and produce some more of our own products. Like we already have eggs. We of course have been doing the turkeys um, for food. And then also I would like to uh, expand on our gardening this year. So I want to start doing some more homesteading projects around here. And because I'm a beginning homesteader on this on this two acres, I want to bring you along on this journey because I know that there, there's probably quite a few of you out there that are just like me, that we're just starting. I don't have things all set up and I want you guys to be able to see each project that I do and hopefully learn along with me. So come on and I'll show you everything and then we're gonna go get our turkeys at the post office. So in here, before we leave, We've got our four little chicks that we picked up when our tribe of many was here visiting. And these are the four chicks that we're gonna add to our current 11 um, chickens that we have. Not sure if they are roosters or hens yet. <laughs> that is yet to be decided. For the baby chicks, and we had this last year when we got our first set of, of chickens, um, we just have a simple stock tank that we picked up at Big R and we have a heat lamp hanging right here with food and water and then we've got some um, sawdust shavings down here, wood shavings for them to nest in. So that will be their home until they, are, they, they have all their feathers in and then we'll start introducing them to the other 11 chickens that we have. And then over here we have two kennels that actually I am going to convert into um, more places for us to keep the baby turkeys and the baby ducks when they arrive. So this one over here, I'm gonna go ahead and start the baby turkeys out. I'm gonna get some cardboard and line the sides, probably up to about this height, but line around each side. We'll put some sawdust in the bottom, but the reason why I wanna do the cardboard up halfway up through the side is so the sawdust doesn't spill out onto the floor. So we're gonna do the baby turkeys in here, and we'll get food and water, and we will also get them a heat lamp for them. And then I thought this would be a great use for the baby ducks. We're gonna be getting 
six baby ducks and once again I'll do cardboard all the way up around the side so the shavings the wood clippings and stuff don't fall out onto the floor and I will also put just a little tub in there for them to enjoy some water to play in and then of course their food and water so they'll stay in until they're old enough as well this is actually an, a project that i have been so excited for so for christmas luke got me a beehive starter kit and i am very very anxious and excited to get this set up um, this is a new up and coming project but I just had it out and was going over the products today I actually went ahead and ordered my bees today guys and they're probably going to be here beginning of May so I can't wait to share that with you as well so we're also going to have bees on our two acre homestead very excited about that adventure and then back around here I wanted to show you guys the new addition that we have so far so we did go ahead and purchase this this is going to be our duck house and I'm uh, so we just go ahead and have it set here right now we're gonna work on getting some more fencing and paneling up for the ducks back here and then you guys have seen this has been our chicken coop that we made last year um, if you guys would like to see how we got the shed on the base and we built the base ourselves, I'll put a link to that video down below I found this on Facebook actually for sale we got it for $400 and it's just a used dog run and here comes all the girls hi girls so these are our flock hi girls yeah and they've done really well this year they have given us a lot of eggs already some of them are double yolks um, so they've done really well and we're excited to keep adding to them so our thought is to build more off of the back of this we'll have our duck house here and we'll fence in I'm hoping to put in a small little pond for them right here to swim in and then maybe in this area I'm gonna fence it off so the turkeys have their own area as well still trying to figure out if we're gonna keep the turkeys in with the chickens like we did last year it seemed to work okay but I'm not sure that I want to do it another year like that and these are the garden boxes that we built last year um, I need to get them cleaned out and actually get some more dirt and soil planting soil in them they're on a hinge and we can open them up to get in that way we don't have so many problems with the deer so we've got a total of three garden boxes what I did learn last year and I grew up in Colorado so I should have already known this the growing season is extremely short and also it is um, hard to grow things here the climate is so much drier than what I was used to when we lived in Illinois for 10 years so drier climate colder evenings you also have to worry about that the growing season is so short so I think we are also talking about adding a greenhouse next to our garden boxes so we can hopefully get some more produce and a longer growing season with that and I'm actually trying to figure out how to enclose these more to get more of that greenhouse effect as well so this is a whole nother project that we were gonna be working on soon we are all in the car except for Luke Luke's at work but we are on our way to pick up our turkeys that I ordered um, via the mail once again I ordered them from Meyer hatchery and I'll that link is included down below for you if you're interested so I wanted to talk a little bit more about this before we go and pick them up last year when we got turkeys I actually got two white broad breasted turkeys and we got two heritage breed turkeys they were bourbon reds and the learning process through that last year was the bourbon reds were absolutely gorgeous but they did not gain as much weight as what the um, broad breasted breed of turkeys uh, do so um, if I were to share with you and you're new to poultry this year I would just 
my learning tip of what I would do differently is actually I've just gone ahead and ordered um, some broad breasted turkeys. This year though I've ordered the bronze so they're going to be brown, more brown color so they'll look a little bit more like the bourbon reds. However they're going to be that broad breasted breed so they do gain weight and they have they're better for meat um, turkeys. I've got these two awesome helpers with me. You guys haven't seen them in a while. They are busy busy teenagers right now. <laughs> So there is a lot of taking them to their activities and um, just watching them grow in their skills that they're finding and their interests and everything like that. But are you guys excited to get turkeys yes. again this year? I'm yes, I'm very excited. I'm really excited. Okay, right. what did you guys like about the turkeys last year? I liked how um, when we were raising them, they were probably one of the friendliest birds we had. They're very friendly Okay. Birds. Um, I like that they just like sit there and let you rub them, but also, I liked their eggs. Their eggs were really good. If we ever get females, if the females come in the mail. Lincoln, what about you? They tasted amazing. They tasted amazing. He, he liked the final end product um, of that. But while raising them, what did you like? I liked how friendly they were, just like Kenya said. And um, their eggs were really good too. Do you guys miss the turkey calls that we would hear yes. every morning? Yes. Yeah. I love the, um, <laughs> I loved the female and the male calls. They were both yeah. very pretty. So the two bourbon reds that we had were male and the two broad-breasted turkeys that we had were female and each one was really different it was fun to watch the males poof up their feathers and strut around and see how pretty they were and they had the more traditional turkey call to them mm -hmm. you would hear them call more traditionally and then the hens they would just have this like um one chirp call yeah. that you get to know and so it was a lot of fun to see that um, and I think the kids I know at the beginning of our journey last year some of you viewers were concerned about what this how the kids would react when it came time to take the turkeys to slaughter but how, how are you guys doing it was a fun experience actually um, when we went to take them we knew that they we'd raise them for this purpose and we knew that they would be really good actually maybe even better than store-bought turkeys because we knew where our food came from and that was a great mm -hmm. experience um, also mom and dad made a fun um, day out of it we went to breakfast together we um, just sort of explored the places of Colorado that no one really even thinks about going to and it's yeah. really fun yeah. so Lincoln what about you Oh, I really liked it because again I get to eat the meat. I mean, <laughs> Lincoln's so all good. about the food. Oh. Yeah, these kids do a lot of the work with the chicken and the poultry around here. They are the ones to get up in the morning and go let them out and feed them and make sure that they're watered. They're the uh, they split the job. One mm -hmm. takes evening, one takes morning, and so at night. They're the ones that go and make sure that they're closed up and that their animals are safe and that once again they're fed and watered. And over this past year, I feel like it's really taught them the fact that these animals depend on them. Yeah, but also their hard work um, pays off in the end and that they see that it is hard work when you're producing your own food and taking care of your own food, but also the satisfaction it's and in, it. yes, and enjoyment that you get out of that, of knowing where your food came from from um, knowing what the food you have fed it and that you have taken care of it and probably had a better life than most turkeys yeah. too that's a nice satisfaction of knowing yeah so it's been a great journey for them as well and I grew up on a cattle ranch here in Colorado, so um, I did grow up knowing where my food came from, knowing the hard work that the ranchers and farmers all put in to just get food on everyone else's plate. And that, that work is very tedious and it is a everyday job. It is not a job that you can just say, well, I don't feel like doing that today. It is something that calls you out every day and you're responsible for those animals every day. And when you do that, you are also responsible of being able to put food on someone else's plate or your own plate right. and you're feeding yeah. yourself. So this has been something that I'm glad that my kids have been able to experience as I experienced as a, a child. So um, are you guys ready to go get our new turkeys? Yes. yes. I can't wait to see how these turn out because right. the turkeys I ate last year were the best turkeys I've ever had in my life. So. All right. So we're going to head to the post office and let's go get our turkeys. All right. We're at the post office. We're getting our baby chicks. 
Thank you guys a bunch. Thank you so much. Indeed. Thank you. I can hear them. They hatched yesterday. Yeah. So guys, they just came in. We're taking them out in the car and then we'll show you guys. This is our first time ever ordering by mail order for chicks. So if you guys have wondered how it works, and you can hear them, they come in this little box and the post office calls the minute that they arrive um, to say that they're, they have arrived. They've got holes in the box. And this is Meyer Hatchery, where we got the chicks from. And so we're, this is like a homesteading um, unboxing. <laughs> that we're doing. So this is our first homestead unbox. So Kenya and Lincoln are gonna open it up here. <gasps> Make sure they don't jump out. And here they are guys. These are our five turkey poults. Baby turkeys are not called chicks, they are called poults. And um, we are gonna have some toms and some hens. So we don't know which is which yet. <laughs> but these are bronze, broad, <laughs> these are bronze broad-breasted poults. And we're very excited to have them. So we are gonna go home and get them all set up and we're gonna walk you guys through what we need to have when you guys get brand new baby chicks or baby turkey poults. Hi guys, welcome to Camp David. Oh. Oh. They're all spotted. They look like leopards. I love them. Don't jump out of the box, okay? Lincoln's making sh Oh. And that is that turkey call that they have when they're baby turkeys. They usually do like oh. it's trying to pick these <laughs> three loud whistles, um, or three peeps in a row. All right, let's get them home and get them settled. On the lid, they have the description of what we have ordered. So it looks like we have got three hens and we have two toms. So a total of five turkeys. We have our baby poults and I've got their nice little we're gonna call this a brooder, all nice and set up. We've got food and water. We've got a nice heat lamp. And all I did was take one of these kennels and line it with some cardboard. And we're gonna be good to go. They are all settled in. Hopefully they'll find their food and water. And we'll check in on them in a little bit. Okay, so they are all settled in and getting acclimated to their new little uh, brooder. And they're gonna stay in here until they all have their full set of feathers and they're big enough to start being outside and once they get all their feathers in that helps them maintain their body temperature a lot better. I did want to go over a few things that if you guys are thinking about getting baby chicks or baby turkey poults um, that you want to make sure it's kind of the must-have list for when you guys get chicks. You of course want to get a water, a feeder, and a heat lamp. You can keep them in a tub or something that will keep them contained until they grow a lot bigger. So this is like their first setup. They don't go directly to a chicken coop. And of course the other thing that you want to have is poultry feed or poultry starter. And we also have chick starter for our baby chicks which are in here. They're all down at the end of the tank right now. Hi guys. These are all things that you can pick up at your local feed store like Big R, Tractor Supply Company, and Murdoch's. If you don't have one of those close to you, also um, we do order a lot of our chicken feed on Chewy.com. They have a great assortment as well. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and seeing how we get our chicks started and set up and I cannot wait to show you our ducklings when they come in in a couple weeks and all the other exciting projects that are going on around here. Thank you guys for watching and as always we'll see you next time.